All right, hello, welcome back, fellow coder, to the Fresh Vote series, where we are building a real-world web application from scratch, leveraging Java, Spring Boot, and other Spring and other related technologies. So, um, in the previous lesson, we were finishing up some of the product page that allowed us to um, populate uh, some values, right? We were, we were populating the name specifically. So let me go and log back in to show you where we were and just to show myself where I, where I was. So I believe we, was, we were on like pro or sorry, not uh, products slash yeah, two. Um, so yeah, we were able to populate a name to the database and save it, but we were left off or we left off with the um, checkbox, whether or not something is published. So I said checkboxes were a bit more tricky. So uh, let's dive into that. So the first thing I would do just to go immediately to how to make it look pretty, I would go to, to the documentation inside of Bootstrap and I would go to, was it content or components? And is there like a checkbox? There's forms. So I guess there is no checkbox specific thing. If I look at forms, there are checkboxes here, but I guess they aren't anything... Um, Okay, you know, they're nothing fancy. They do have the same sort of uh, form group that others have, but they do have a form check class that, that they put onto it um, with a an input type uh, checkbox and a label class. So let's copy paste that. I mean, hey, why not? Uh, we'll, we'll use uh, what we have available to us in the example. So on the product HTML page, we have the, um, where was it? Uh, it said, is product published? Is product published? Oh, I see, we did it in here. I was saying that when you run it inside of a server context. So I used TH text in the previous lesson to populate, um, dynamically populate content into the text area of this div. But as you see, I've written here is the, or here's, here's is, here's the content of the div text. But as you can see on the screen, it doesn't say anything to the tune of here's the context of the div text, right? There's nothing on here that says that. Well, that's because it is dynamically being replaced um, by this stuff right here, by the TH text, okay? If we were to open this uh, page without a server running, so in other words, if we just went straight to the HTML page, I think I might be able to say, oh, show in System Explorer. If I were to open this page right here and say product.html and double click on it and say open with Google Chrome, You'll see what this looks like. Here's the content of the div text. So this file right here is not being run inside of a server context. It's not being run inside of my Tomcat server like that's running over here, right? In this tab, this is running in a server context. So that's actually rendering something different because the server is detected and Tomcat is there and Java is there and therefore uh, Timeleaf can do its thing and Timeleaf can uh, dynamically replace what's in there. But the point here is that the, the, the two are different from each other. Uh, and really the, the, the point of this is to be able to um, give uh, the project to a designer, uh, like a, um, a CSS, like a front end design type person who's maybe not familiar with programming. They can design the web page and make it look pretty. They can put their styles on it. They can do whatever they like. Uh, but they're not going to make it dynamic. They're not going to make it responsive or not. Sorry, I shouldn't, they will make it responsive because I'm sure that they have the, the power to do that, but they won't make it dynamic in terms of hooking it up to a database and hooking it up to a back end system. Okay. Designers, you know, they don't want to do that. That's not their job, right? So they can create a plain old HTML text page. And then you can take that plain old HTML text uh, that's here. Maybe they have a div, a div and some content, but they don't have this part, right? This is what they have. They've just written this, but then you can augment this div with time leaf by putting in the TH text. And then when you run it in a server context, boom, it replaces it with what you have here. So that's the concept behind time leaf and why time leaf exists is really to help um, you know, designers work in the, the plain old HTML uh, and CSS land that they're used to and be able to hand it off to a programmer like us and then we can augment their code with this. So it's the best of both worlds. Anyway, point is, let's go back to uh, the example here with our form class group or form group form check stuff. Let's paste that code in here. So this comes from our bootstrap example. Right, uh, but instead of having you know these example check one and check me out, I actually want to have it say something along the lines of is product uh, is product published yes or no type of thing or 
I, I guess we can have a, a checkbox, obviously, is what we're doing. So how would what would we want this to say? We, we would want the, there to be a checkbox, and um, we would want it to say, you know, is published or something like that. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, I like that. And then the ID here, the ID needs to be, uh, it needs to pull from the back end, right? So we don't want it to just say ID, we want to say TH field, okay? Now it's been a while since I've worked with checkboxes specifically, which is kind of um, embarrassing to say, but that's true. I haven't worked with a checkbox in a while. So I'm gonna see if this works. Maybe it'll just work out of the box, in which case um, I'm gonna look like a bit of a hotshot, right? Well, it is a checkbox, but <laughs> let's see what, um, what, what value was it that, oh, right, product.published. So product.published is the value that we're feeding off of, right? If it's published, then we want the checkbox to be checked. If it's not published, then we don't want the checkbox to be checked, right? Okay, and this uh, label is for published, okay? Because this is gonna resolve, this th field is gonna resolve to an ID equal to published. So therefore this for statement needs to hook up with the ID, which is going to be published. So that should work. Um, and yeah, I can, I guess we can delete the rest for now. Um, kind of gets rid of the whole purpose of my time leaf, uh, example that I was showing you before. But anyway, uh, I think that should do it. Um, but we'll see. I could be completely wrong. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. So is published is blank. Okay. And that's sort of expected because it was null. If I go to products one is published is also blank. So let me change this to product number one and let me check is published and say save. Ooh, it is checked. That's good. So if I refresh, ooh, it's still checked. Look at that. We go to number two. The other one is not checked. Let's check it to say published, save, refresh. There you go. Product one is published. Product two is published. So there you go. It actually is not as complex as I thought going into it. I guess I'm thinking of my experience with uh, maybe JSPs. It was a bit more difficult then, potentially. Um, I can't I can't recall anymore. So there you go. That functionality is now working. Ooh, but it, look at this. When I click on is published, it's not checking the checkbox, which is not what I expected. I expected that if I clicked on the label, it will check the checkbox. So let's open up our, our tool, dev tools by hitting, I hit F12. And uh, let's inspect the label. So the label is saying for published and the input type checkbox it oh look at this published one is what it does so there's some some tomfoolery going on in the back end here with uh with the html output and this is controlled by time leaf so time leaf is doing this um so that the tomfoolery is needed in order to make our lives easy for handling checkboxes so remember i knew there is a reason why th i thought in my in my head, I thought this might have been more confusing, and it is confusing. Look, it, it does these two different things. It has an input type hidden with name of underscore published, and the value is on, and then it has an input type checkbox with a class with an ID of published one with a name of published with a value of true and a check to. So there's a lot going on here in terms of uh, what it's doing on the back end to make this stuff work. Um, so that's interesting, right? So basically in order for this label to work properly, we actually need to change it to published one is the ID that, that time leaf is actually rendering for us. So if I change this to published one, save, refresh, um, and then click on the label, see now it's working. Now when I click on the label, it checks and unchecks the box, or I can obviously check and uncheck the box itself and it does what I expect it to do, okay? Uh, okay, so now some just some housekeeping items. Uh, I remember I think I think I did BTN large before. Is that what I did to make? Yeah, so we have larger buttons. So I forgot to add that class BTN large just to make the save product button bigger. And then I wouldn't mind making the labels and stuff bigger as well. Is that what we did for the login screen? I can't recall anymore. Let me go to login screen. Uh, no, these look like normal sized fields. Um, yeah, so maybe I won't change that. It just looks kind of doesn't look all that amazing to me just having a checkbox like this. So maybe in the future we can augment this to look a little even more pretty than it already is because I don't feel like, you know, the bootstrap here is really doing a whole lot in terms of making it look nice. Uh, let's see, is there anything that I can see in here that would look cooler? What's a list group? No, this is... Nah, that's not what I want. Yeah, I thought maybe there was some sort of a slider um, 
Is there any sort of like slider? There's a carousel that definitely don't want a carousel. Uh, slider, what else? Getting started, utilities. So it doesn't look like there's anything, um, you know, on off. So there, I know that there are um, switches that you can download. Uh, custom form switches. How about this? Ooh, that looks a little nicer. Yeah, is this part of? Okay, a switch has the mark of a custom checkbox. Okay, so this looks a lot better to me. Okay, how do we do this? And then select menu. And so these are all just different unrelated things. So this is in the forms. So this was hidden deep down in the forms was a switch. So, okay, I have like, let's do another four minutes and see if we can get this working in four minutes. So a switch has a markup of a custom checkbox, but uses the dot custom switch class to render a toggle switch. Switches also support disabled. Is it just a matter of putting a custom switch there? Custom control, custom switch for the div class. Okay, so let's change, instead of form group and form check, let's change it to custom control and custom switch. And then class is custom control input. Okay, class instead of form check input is custom control input. And then label, custom control label. So all of the classes need to change. Okay, and you can see they have this, uh, you know, custom switch one terminology here and the ID is one. So they're, they're already using it um, in here. Although this is bootstrap and not time leaf. But anyway, let's give that a shot and let's see if that changes the look and feel of it. Okay. Uh, okay, I mean, not quite what I was expecting. Uh, so what else is there here? Do I need to do... There's disabled custom checkbox. I don't want a custom checkbox. Although that checkbox does look nicer. But the switch... Custom... Do I need to... Uh, this is part of form, so that I shouldn't have to... Download anything extra. Let's see. For even more customization or, and cross-browser consistency... Use our completely custom form elements to replace defaults. They're built on top of semantic and accessible markup. So they're solid replacements. Each checkbox and a radio input uh, and label pairing is wrapped in a div to create custom control. Structurally, yeah, this is the same uh, approach as we were using. Uh, we use the sibling selector for all input states like checked. Okay. Hide the default, blah, blah, blah. Okay, interesting. So it doesn't sound like there's anything different I need to do, but it's definitely not functioning the way I expect it to. Div class, custom control, custom switch, custom control, custom switch. We're inside of a form. Input type checkbox, custom control input, custom control input, ID, label class, label class, custom control label for blah. Input type, yeah. So I'm doing everything here. So there's some some something is off with this uh, 4.2. Am I using 4.2 in terms of the uh, Bootstrap? So I'm using 4.1.3. So maybe this is as of 4.2. So what if I change my CSS to be 4.2, and then maybe I might also need to bring in the the JavaScript as well. Um, so that it did not like that. 4.2. Let's go to uh, 4.2 latest. How do I get the, uh, here's the link for it, 4.2.1. So I'm gonna copy and replace this with 4.2.1. Refresh. Ah, okay, so there it is. So that was, a, that was a tricky one to figure out, right? So I hadn't seen this before, and that's because I think it, it, it's new. It, it was only introduced in 4.2 point whatever. Uh, we were using 4.1.3, so this is in terms of the this video series being released. That's a that's a new piece of functionality. Um, anyway, so let me save that. Yep, let me uncheck it and save it. Yeah, so it's working. Okay, cool. And then I wonder if I can make it bigger. Can I make? Can I say like? Uh, let's see. I wouldn't even know how to make it bigger in terms of. Uh, let's see, content or components. Forms switches is here. 
is there any no there's no examples for how to make it bigger so anyway that can be that could be a completely side thing that maybe i do later um but there you go now we have a, a switch that looks a little bit better in terms of um you know the default functionality or the default look and feel um that we are used to seeing although it looks like we have these um you know, slightly nicer looking checkboxes as well, which is just a little bit better looking, you know, rounded corners and all, but I kind of like this switch idea, right? So there you have it. Um, thanks for sticking with me through this process. Again, you, you get to learn from uh, what goes through the mind of a real developer while they are coding more or less in real time, right? So this is, I had no idea that this was introduced as a 4.2 point whatever, Point one, I guess, for Bootstrap, and you just saw me struggle to try to figure it out. So I went the 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 uh, process that my mind went through. You just witnessed, and there was n there, I didn't do any cuts of this video. That was me in real time trying to figure out and debug why it wasn't working. Okay, because I saw the code. My code was identical. Um, the only thing that my brain could to think of as to why it wasn't working must have been a version thing. Right? It's always a version thing. Anyway, so there you have it. Uh, thanks so much for following along with this video. In the next lesson, um, I kind of want to work on the products endpoint because when I go here, uh, and there's nothing that shows up, right? So the products page should also show uh, some sort of a list of all the products that you have to offer, okay? So that's one thing that we I want to have so that we can easily navigate. So I don't have to manually say slash one or slash two and type it in here. I want to have a, a nice, consistent way to navigate through through there, and also maybe if we have time in the next one, we should at least um, on the on the uh, localhost eighty eighty page. There's no login button. I want to be able to access the login page when when we visit this URL endpoint again. Instead of having to just hit slash login and type it in manually, um, I don't like that. I don't like having to type stuff in in the URL. So just uh, you know, tidying up the workflow a little bit better um, for our. Uh, our purposes okay so also the dashboard i would like to add a way to look at the products on the dashboard so probably that's where these products need to be listed is on the dashboard and then when you click on a product from the dashboard then you can see uh, it'll take you to the appropriate product so that's probably what what i'm going to do is is to uh put the links on the dashboard okay so we'll do that in the next video looking forward to seeing you there as always take care of yourself happy learning and bye for now